Hey everybody, it's Jay. So we've talked a lot about some higher end kind of issues in my past videos, but one of the things I'd like to talk to you about today is to simplify some things and talk to you about the different ways you can work with Azure. Um, so the fact is that there's so many ways that we can access and manipulate and create, remove, update, destroy, whatever we need to do on Azure. Uh, and there are tools that we can use alongside to make our experience really easier. Um, so some of the ways we can interact with Azure obviously is the portal where we can go in here, we can create groups, um, we can create databases, virtual machines, all the different types of things that we could do with Azure. Uh, but inside of here is the cloud shell. And I love the cloud shell because what the cloud shell gives you the ability to do is use an interactive bash shell or PowerShell and be able to do things you would need to do on a maybe local computer and use say some of the more common tools and one of the most common tools that I've mentioned in some of my prior videos and for you starters you might really want to just know a little bit more about it is Git. That's right Git. So what is Git? It's open source distributed version control system designed to handle everything from very large projects with speed and efficiency. Um, to put it easily, Git is a really great way to make sure that there's version control on your files and everything in when you're creating repositories. So when you create new code, um, what you can do is you can commit it to a repository and you'll always be able to save and go back. Um, so what's great is you might have heard of some of the popular places people keep Git uh, online. So there are Git uh, repositories that you can get from a place like GitHub if you sign up for an account uh, and you can go and create repositories. You can save them and you can have uh, branches with different versions of uh, what you've worked on. You can merge your branches. Uh, you can have pull requests. You can invite other people to using it. And there's also Azure DevOps, fa fairly similar. But you might be asking like, how do I actually start using Git? Well, I'm going to give you just a few easy steps to use the Azure Cloud Shell and just get started with Git pretty quickly. So what's great is Git is already in your Cloud Shell. So uh, if you're not already there, just go to shell.azure.com after you've signed up for an account. Uh, and then you'll be here in the uh, Cloud Shell. And what you'll see is that the Cloud Shell gives you uh, tools like Git right here. And you don't actually need to go and install it on your local computer. You can and what's great about that is that you can uh, then take a repository you've created say in your cloud shell maybe you have then put it onto Azure DevOps and if you need to get it and work on it say on your local computer you can you can just clone it that's why Git works so well because it's extremely portable it allows different branches so different people can work on a sim or project and then work on individual parts of those projects and then uh, have other people in my uh, organization, if I'd like to, uh, work together and collaborate on them. Uh, same thing with GitHub, but what's ultimately possible is that you can do this just uh, locally on uh, the Cloud Shell if you just want to get started with Git. So really, the first part of working with Git is um, configuring yourself. So Git config, uh, you're going to see there's some options here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is what I like to normally do to kind of get started. So we'll config everything as we go along. But what I want to show you is the very, very first steps of creating a directory, initializing a repository, and then we're going to create a file, uh, create a branch, and then modify it. Okay, so let's get started real easily. Uh, we're just going to create a directory and so we'll create this directory and we'll call it J demo Okay, and the next step in there is we're going to just go into J demo LS minus AL see there's nothing there right now and what we're going to do is type git init and then dot to reference this specific, uh, specific directory that we're in. So now it's initialized an empty git repository. So what does that mean? Well, now there's a dot git within that directory and we don't need to work within it. So uh, I'm just gonna show you what's inside 
um, a whole bunch of information that creates meta information about the changes you've made uh, when the commits have happened so that you're always able to rewind back uh, to a change or switch between branches. So all this is embedded within here um, and you don't necessarily need to manage this on your own. This is all handled by Git. Don't touch this stuff. Leave it alone. Uh, anything you need to do is done by using the git binary. So the first thing we're going to do is create a file. And the easiest way to do that is we're just going to do echo, hey there. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to redirect that into a file and we'll just call it test01. Okay? So ls minus there. There we go. Test01. So where are we? Excuse me. So we are on a branch that has yet to be born. So we actually need to uh, assume that we're going to make this our main branch. And then if we want to uh, commit more, we can create new branches. And then eventually we can merge those branches if we'd like to. Uh, so let's take a look. And uh, what we can now do is add this particular file to our repository by just doing git add dot. So that says everything within the directory, add into the repository. Then we do a git commit minus m to create a message. And what we'll say is uh, first commit. And now it's going to tell me who I am. It needs me to tell you who I am because I haven't configured git yet. So what we can do is just copy this and put our username our user email so in this case it's user email and it's jdestro at gmail.com and next we're going to config our username so that's what my username I uh, use for most stuff and that is Jay Gordon so what I'll do is username and actually there you go Jay Gordon simple as that. So now I've configured who is going to be making these commits so that there's a, a natural record of who's doing what. So now I've added the first commit. So to the master branch which has been created, we've got one file change, one insertion. And now uh, we've committed this and now uh, it's a part of the branch or the master branch. So now if we want to uh, go and create a new branch, maybe that's going to modify that test01 file, we can do git checkout minus b, and that refers to branch. And so we're gonna create a branch called branch01. So as we've switched to this branch, and now we can go ahead and uh, make changes to the file. So vi test01, because hey, within our cloud shell is vim, you have it right there. So let's go, hey there, do file changes. And I'm going to save it. I know how to get out of Vim, that old gag. And so what I've decided is I want this change to be on this branch, but I'm not ready to merge them yet. So let's git add and we'll git commit minus M and we'll say changes to file. Okay. So now if we actually go and get checkout master and we go back to the master branch and we look at test01, we see that the change that I made before isn't in this because it's only on the other branch. So let's say I want to continue making changes. I can eventually uh, switch between those branches uh, and then make more modifications to the file. And then when I'm ready, I can do a merge. Now, we're not going to cover merging right now. It's a bit much for getting started. But what we are going to do is show you how to clone a repository. So let's go to this application. Uh, so I have an app here that I've created. It's a real simple application. And I want to bring it locally so I can maybe make some changes. So what I can do is go to GitHub. And in most GitHub, uh, to create an account, it's pretty simple. Go to their website. They're going to eventually ask you to create an SSH key. What you can do is come over here to the uh, server, uh, or I should say the Cloud Shell, and uh, follow the instructions 
here. If you go to help and go to set up Git, you can follow this authenticating uh, GitHub from Git, and I recommend going through the connecting over SSH. Uh, it will show you how to uh, generate SSH keys. Uh, very, very easy to get started doing. Just copy and paste this information right over here. Uh, I've already configured my SSH key, so what I'm going to do is I don't need to uh, configure that. What I can do right here is clone, it, and I'm going to clone it via SSH. So I just copy this repository right here. And now I can go over here to the cloud shell. And so what I'll do is I'll go back to my main directory, make dir demo, cd demo, nothing in here. So let's git clone. So now this is if you need to just start working with repositories uh, that maybe you find some code online and you're not really ready to commit it to that branch, uh, or that project, but you just want to start looking at the clone, the, the code that you've uh, downloaded. Uh, go right in there, go to my directory that I've cloned, and if you see, just like we had, we had a git file, or I said a git directory, uh, and within there is a file in here called git ignore, and I'm going to show you that. A git ignore file is a list of common files that you just simply don't want to have committed to the repository uh, when you're working locally on your computer or maybe somewhere else. So let's say I have uh, some particular you know, uh, file logs that I don't want to have committed that get generated during tests. Or you know, if you're on a Mac and you have these DS store files that sometimes show up and you don't want them to get committed, you can do that. So that's the real benefit of using a uh, git ignore file. So those are the real basics of starting to use the cloud shell alongside git. Um, git will give you the ability, like I said, to make sure that there's a version control on all the code that you write or modify and then commit to projects like we, can, we could do right here. Uh, on GitHub. So if you have any questions about getting started using Git, uh, there's a ton of resources. I really recommend you look over at GitHub's resources, take a look at the Azure DevOps project, and also just check out the Git website, git-scm.com. And um, you can use that, like I said, you don't need to install on anything if you just sign up for an Azure account. Uh, real simple to uh, go ahead and start using Git because it's already installed for you. So uh, if you have any other questions about it, you can leave it down underneath in the comments or find me on Twitter at jdestro.